I would despise everyone. Their laugh, their screaming, their obnoxious smile. I would hate them. I would hate when they bumped into me, even by accident. Some days it wouldn't really bother me, but the other day I'd just stare at them. A certain anger would build up. I would smile at the thought as my fist clenched. My eyes would widen, and for a split second. But then reality would wake me up. I'm not this. I'm not strong. They aren't my enemy. It's not their fault. It's just not. It's someone else's fault. But God, it's hard to not blame everyone. After coming back home, I play a game that let all my frustration. Luckily, there was a game I had its demo. And I would play it over and over again. And what I love about this game was the blood, the gore, the anger, the power. The gameplay was fun but difficult. It would take me multiple attempts to defeat the hardest boss, but when I did, when I got it, God, it was satisfying to rip them apart. It kept my mind away from my real life problem and let on my anger. And <laughs> the name of the game was God of War 3. Yeah, my first God of War was the third one. So you can kinda imagine I didn't really understood the story much when I was playing the game, since I also bought it when it finally came out. So, you know, at this point I needed to get myself into the God of War collection to understand the story of Kratos. And, well, in the God of War game. In those games, it dealt with a warrior that had everything but made a deal with a god to save his kingdom and family. Sadly, he was struck by this god at a sick price. He made Kratos took the life of his wife and daughter. From his terrible deed, he was cursed to forever relive the death of his wife and daughter by his own son as their ash covered his body. White as snow, red as blood, he became the vengeful spirit. He became the unstoppable warrior. He became the ghost of Sparta. The story of God of War 1 started with Kratos going on a quest to get his revenge on Ares, the god that twisted him into taking his family's life. On his journey, many stuff happened. He obtained powers, he get killed by Ares, he meet new ally, and all the while, he's enjoying it. Until he finally gets his revenge. Ares, I remember how you saved me that night. I was trying to make you a great warrior. You succeeded. And that's what it was. Ares. The God of War wanted all along to make him the greatest warrior, the ultimate monster, not a hold back by love, fit only by the purpose of his mission, to be someone that can be and never will be stopped. But when he finally obtained his revenge, his mission was done. He'd done the bidding of the God, but in exchange for to do their bidding, he only asked for one favor, to have them undo this curse, the one that affected his memory and haunt him in his sleep. But he couldn't. There was nothing to be done. All he has left was this haunting memory, and so he took his life, or tried to. The game ended with Kratos sitting on a throne that the god offered him as a reward. You see many wars flash before our eyes. It even goes as far as World War II and other wars to show that Kratos was the one supervising them, that he was the god of war. And that's how the god of war ended. Or how it was supposed to end. God of War 2 started with Kratos giving away all his power and losing his title of God of War. Beside that anyway trophy sequel game, the story was about Kratos becoming a warmonger in which Zeus decided to stop him. He saw him as a tyrant that needed to be destroyed, an animal with too much anger and power. And so he killed Kratos, betrayed by the god once more. Kratos went into another journey to have his revenge. And yet, yeah, in this game he's even more brutal and cruel. He fully became the unstoppable warrior Ares wanted him to become, to fight against champion and others in his way. Athena, the god that always helped him in those games, tried to stop him, tell him that it's wrong what he's doing, that killing Zeus would solve nothing, but nothing would make him falter. When the time came to strike Zeus and end it all, she got in the way, knowing that if Zeus dies, the world would perish with him. There she revealed that Zeus was his father, so to take down Zeus, he called upon the help of the titans. And where the second game finished, 
the third game started with the assault on Olympus. So, the third game you begin where it was left up with Kratos ready to take his revenge. But he dies again. <laughs> and now as he loses all his power again, he meet an old friend, Ertina. But she's different now. She's wearing. She's clearly isn't the same the last time. But she's your ally. She wants to help you. Though those circumstances are very unnatural, Kratos just decides to ignore the obvious sign and progress forward. He starts on a journey to take down Zeus, where he kills as many gods that get in his way. He even meets up a girl that reminds him of his daughter, Calliope. There's a moment where he stops letting his anger take him over. Titan maybe doesn't need power, especially if it demands her sacrifice. For a split second, when it came down to sacrificing her to achieve ultimate power and take on his revenge on Zeus, Kratos hesitated. The ultimate warrior, the monster, took pity or maybe he felt compassion for the first time. But of course. For once in your pathetic life, don't fail. Don't fail her like you failed your family. After fighting for a while and realized that the power he seek, the power of Pandora's box, the power of hope, was inside him all along. He took a moment to look at his deed, at the world he destroyed, and as a final act, driven to finish his revenge, he decided to strike his family killer. He decided to give the power of hope to mankind. And that was it. The God of War used his final act to do one good thing. That was the end. That's how God of War ended. Or how it was supposed to end. A couple of years later, I had grown up and it's been a while that I saw Kratos ever again. Oh, okay. No, of course. Of course. I was still considering myself as a fan of God of War. I would make Kratos and play an All Star Battle Royale. Which, you know, I'll just say it's a good game. I like it. But it's kinda unbalanced with a few issues. So if you ever wonder, oh, if you never play it, well, I think it's good. <laughs> anyway, that was it. Like Kratos, my life changed. I was hopeful again. And everything was good. Until, you know, the 2018 reveal. <laughs> I was screaming. My god. The God of War is back. Now, at that point, you would think that I would have been loved, like, that it would have been my shit. Oh my god, Kratos is back, but he's more enriched and it's a complex story. Then, you know, I made a video back then when it first came out. And I'ma just, like, play some clip. So don't know why people scream that it's perfection. It's also just a story about a father and a son. We have seen this countless times. And I'm not saying that the story is bad or the concept is. I'm saying that I don't understand why it is worshipped that much. And also because I don't like when people insult in some way the classic. I mean, it's an awesome franchise. And sure, the story wasn't kind of the best like The Last of Us. But I enjoy it and still now. So, if you could understand some of it, basically the video was about that. I was disappointed that the story was one I already seen before, like The Last of Us or Logan. I still think I still agree to some point I made back then, but I really like the character art they made for Kratos, since at least compared to the other similar story in this one, you knew the monster he was before he became the dad you see that always helped the kid that is kinda of changing him into a better person. Also when I made that video, I was also angry, I saw people saying to God of War and Turn it into gold. Like, the fuck does that mean? Like, what the fuck are you trying to say? That the old God of War had no depth and that it was shit. That pissed me off, kinda. And back then, they were blowjobbing so hardcore the new Kratos, saying that the old character was with no depth and all that mean shit. And <laughs> that the character was boring? Also, have no depth? Like, Kratos acted all this revenge because of his grief, because of his pain. He even died in the third game out of hope that after all his mistakes, he could probably do one good thing to, I don't know, salvage it all. The PSP game had Kratos with a lot of emotional moments involving his brother and daughter, or even a moment with his mother. But the thing that probably annoyed me the most wasn't the fan that were saying that, that were just being mean to the old Kratos. What annoyed me the most was this. Ultra violence and sexism, that's God of War, why aren't we doing that? So I thought it was a totally clever idea to have Kratos be a dad 
uh, and try to actually be a dad rather than use it as like a cutaway cinematic to describe whatever past he had. You see, they kept talking as if the character needed to grow up. Like, you can see this guy clearly worked it on God of War 3, another God of War game, and yet they still thought that the character was shallow. I kind of get it if you want to go that way and say he's shallow because he was like an action movie character like the Doom guy or John Wick where you sometimes don't have time to dwell on the character mindset or psychology and so it's non-stop fight after non-stop fight but I guess but I guess I don't know I guess it didn't matter for people all Kratos was a monster and that's all he was right that's what it was also, I was kind of annoyed that I was well, more like I was scared that the fact that they brought back God of War, I was afraid that because new fans would know the old God of War, they would never bring back the old gameplay. And yeah, I guess my my fear became true. You know, there won't ever be a classic God of War game, but it's fine. I think that's how things are. Stuff change, you know. So whatever. I speak as if I didn't like the story of God of War 2018, but I do like it though, you know? And seeing that Kratos was going to die in the next game, I was ready to say goodbye to Kratos and have it close up everything, expecting for a while that, hey, that's life, you know, story ends and whatever, and you know, that's how the God of War will end. And you know, God of War Ragnarok came out finally, and yeah? you know, I was not blown away, well, yeah, I was well. We got for Ryan and Ross focus on the character's fate. It's about accepting who we are and what changes. us. It's about becoming better than to be a slave to our fear and to our... <sighs> I know what God for Ryan and Ross was. Alright. But I'll tell you something else. I thought it was the end. I thought that the story of Kratos would have ended with a conclusion to the character. While a reminder of his history, what made the game just well me was that I thought that's it. I thought that it was the end of the character. That the theme of the story would have been different than the last game. And yes, they are different than the last game. But it was still about Kratos' need to understand that he's more than who he was. That he shouldn't be afraid to become the monster he was. That if he opened his heart, if he become ready to listen to the voice inside of him, the Atreus voice that tell him to do good, to be good, then that's enough. That at the end, he make a big deal that he get treated with respect and that he doesn't have to be an evil god, but a god that brings good. Yeah, I was well. You could ask me what did I want in. I could give you a lot of answer, right? Yeah. But I guess the one I choose is this one. I wanted to at least have a conclusion to everything the character had. Not only the Nordic art, but the Greece one as well. At least mention if there's a civilization, if, if they're prospering or not. Or... What about Athena? What is she doing? Not that it matters, Athena just like, you know, did Greece rebuild itself, you know? Or, or I don't know. I, don't know. I wanted to have a game that wouldn't belittle the prequel by saying how much better they are now because they seek maturity. I expected the end of a journey with a character that I grew up with. But I guess things change, right? And I, I guess I didn't. I guess I'm still back there in Greece. I, I don't know. I guess for them that's all it was. That's all that Kratos was, right? A monster and nothing more. And, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I didn't know what they thought they were. I misjudged it. I, I was wrong. God of War Valhalla came out as a free DLC. It gets spoiled a lot because of YouTubers that can't seem to keep shit hidden. Like, the fuck? So I go back to God of War Ragnarok and I reinstall the game. And I'm a little excited because true and true, I'm kind of shallow. You know, if I see Kratos, I go, oh, oh. So we start the DLC with how Kratos fell through the game of the Nordic era, you know, afraid of becoming who he was. He got offered by Freya to become the new God of War and in those lands, his tear won't know part of it. And you know, they're in need of a God of War. And Kratos is clearly the right choice since he proved himself in Ragnarok, but he's afraid of what that kind of power would do to him. Especially when in God of War 2 he became a warmonger and made war in every place he could. And he's afraid he didn't change. He's afraid to become who he was. 
a monster. One of the things that you can notice in this DLC was that they made a lot of reference to previous God of War game. They talk about the ascension, about the sacrifice he had to make, about Ghost of Sparta, about Chain of Olympus, where he helped Helios and fixed the sock and you know saved the world. They talk about every God of War game really. And I was surprised because I thought that it was, you know, all about staying away from that Kratos. That it was about not becoming that shadow person he was. But then Terry confronts Kratos' past action by giving him perspective. That his actions were misguided, true. But that he started his role of destruction with good intention to help, to save, to heal, to protect. That it wasn't just about killing or to destroy that those old game. Yes. They were action game with gore and a lot of senseless violence, but it was more, he was more, that he is more, that he can not be more. I think back on Ascension, I remember how Kratos just refused to take an innocent life, that once before he was a kind soul, one that hoped better for his daughter and family, or in God of War 1 when he fight off a wave of enemy just to protect his family that he couldn't save. In Ghost of Sparta he tried to save his brother and he really did. In God of War 2 he wanted to rebuild Sparta. He even turned back time to stop its destruction, to save its people. In God of War 3 he didn't want to sacrifice Pandora. And in the end he gave up his life to give mortal hope. He was many things and labeling as just one word such as a monster would be a lie. A monster wouldn't be able to change, he wouldn't be able to forgive or feel shame, to become passionate and apologize, he wouldn't be able to forgive himself, and certainly wouldn't be able to love again, or to care again, or to hate himself, or to regret, he just, he wouldn't. A monster wouldn't do that. The ghost of Sparta. cruel, arrogant. But you are more than that. You have always been more than what others saw. You are more than that. There's a reason why that scene was perfect, except that they didn't hire the old voice actor to do the voice of the young Kratos, but you know, it's whatever, it's just a little nitpicking. <laughs> Instead, it made me realize how misguided I was. What I mistook fan service and entitlement was just respect, utmost respect for the character and where he come from. <laughs> I guess it took me more time than others, but I get it now. I would just blinded by rage that I felt like every time they insulted or criticized the old Kratos that he was just a monster and nothing more that part of me they were insulting the game that I needed when I was young the game that I loved to play when, whenever I felt down or sad or angry and part of me got better about it I don't know I guess I guess it just took more time than others for me to realize but I get it now I like this new Kratos. It just, you know, took me a while. And I just felt like everyone, even the creator were ashamed of the past or, or what the character in the game were, that I was stuck on the past. And I, I realize now that it was my anger that kept me there, that, that I was the fool. And maybe the reason why I wanted to talk about all of those stories, because all those stories of God of War are engraved in my head. As if they were like, word scrape on my skin key moment that just will never fade away just like the ash of Kratos because because I guess part of them were just how much fun they were and how much I needed them back then and so seeing him now finally being able to accept who he was and understanding that if he was more then that he can be more now they made me real And maybe I, there was nothing for me to be better about. There was nothing for me to be better. You know, I guess this was my last scene. My last moment of finally letting go. Of understanding. 
with Kratos at the same time, not accepting their password, letting her anger and answer, I don't know, blinding us, won't let us move forward, and that it's time for us to sit back on that throne. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry if I sound a little uh, pretentious. Alright, uh, I hope you liked this video. Subscribe to not forget the channel and until we see each other again, have a good day, man. Take me back to a place where I felt at home. Take me back to a day when we weren't alone. Take me back to an age when the world felt small. Way back before we blew it all. Take me back to a place where I felt at home. Take me back to a day when we weren't alone. Take me back to an age when the world felt small. Way back before we blew it all. Too many things going on. I can't keep track of them all from people dropping.